people, you're not you're 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 not the you're not the church church person that's always waiting on God. Amen. 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 When you understand principle, you understand that things happen for a reason. Amen. So what, what one of the things that um one of the things that we always endeavor to do here is to take the real spiritual spooky out of our God ex- experience. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. We want to take the real spiritual spooky out of it. In other words, we want you to be able to get the victory that you need when you need it. Yes, sir. Say amen. amen. I see some of y'all, some of y'all don't understand what I'm saying. So when, you, when we talk about principle, we're talking about laws and we're talking about things that God have established uh, that governs the kingdom. Amen. So number one, uh, you're a kingdom citizen. You're a kingdom citizen because when Jesus came, he brought a kingdom message that, that brought the kingdom back to us. Amen. He didn't, Jesus never brought us Christianity. You'll never see Jesus talking about being a Christian. You'll never see Jesus referencing Christianity. You'll never see Jesus talking about any of those religious things. What you'll see is Jesus coming and establishing the principle of the kingdom of God in our lives so that when we operate in these principles, they will work for us. Amen. Amen. So when, when, um, when God created the whole existence in Genesis chapter number one, what we see is God creating this earth for man for, to rule according to his kingdom rule. And then we see in Genesis chapter number three, we see man forfeiting that kingdom rule. Amen. What we don't see is man forfeiting heaven because man was never meant to go to heaven. Heaven was never created for man to go as a place of, um, a place of refuge. Amen. If you read the scriptures, God never gave man heaven. What he gave man was earth. All right, let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verse number 26. Y'all kind of quiet on me today. Maybe y'all don't, yeah, some of y'all don't know where I'm going with this. I am not, I'm not, a, I'm not a church, I'm not a church teacher. I'm a kingdom teacher. I believe in teaching the kingdom of God because I believe that's what God gave us. He gave us a kingdom. The kingdom of God uh, and the church can be very two different things. And this is why a lot of people are not experiencing success because they're going by church principle. And God never gave us church principle. He gave us kingdom. Let's look at Genesis 1, verse number 26. And when you're there, shout amen at me. All right, Genesis 1, 26. Uh, Z, do we have, we got the scriptures today? Can you handle it or are you too busy? Okay, all right. Genesis 1, 26. And God said, right, let us make man in our... Now, look at me. When, when he says here in Genesis 1, 26, when he says, bless you, when he says, let us make man, he's talking about spirit beings. Say amen to that. Because man is a, okay, let me say it like this. Let me tell you. In John chapter 4, verse 24, the scripture tells us that God is a what? Is a spirit, right? Everybody all right with that? All right, God is a spirit. So when God says in Genesis 1, 26, let us make man after our image, he says, he, I am making men after like me. I'm a spirit. So this body we are in is not us. It's just the house we're in. Amen. This is not us. We are spirit beings. Amen. We are spirit beings living in physical bodies. The physical body uh, is you only have a physical body so you can inhabit earth. Amen. Without this physical body, you can't inhabit earth. In other words, when this physical body rejects you, you got to leave the planet. Spirit, the spirit you, the, the one that's looking outside this body. Amen. So when he says in Genesis 1, 26, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, he's talking about spirit beings. And then he says, here's the most important thing, and let them have, and let them have, now he says, let them have dominion over the fish of the, over the fowl of the, of the cattle and all, and over all of the, and over all of the, and over all the earth. So God, you don't have dominion in heaven. You have the dominion in the earth. Here is your first place of dominion. Your first place of dominion is not heaven. So people say, well, pastor, are you telling us don't look forward to going to heaven? No, I am saying don't look forward to going to heaven and then leave your dominion on the earth. In other words, don't look so forward to going to heaven that you don't exercise your dominion on the earth. Your dominion is for the earth. In other words, you are supposed to be dominating your situation and circumstances, not being dominated. Clap your hands and say amen. 
So he says in Genesis 1, 26, uh, put it back up there for me one more time, Z. He says, and God said, let us make man after our image and our likeness and let them have dominion over all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, and male, female, he created thee them. And God blessed them and said, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, fowl of the air, on over every living thing that moveth upon the earth earth. So God gave man dominion for the earth. That's the first thing he gave us, right? All right. Now in Genesis chapter number three, what do we see man losing? We don't see man losing heaven because man, Adam never even thought about transitioning to heaven. That was never in his mindset. The only thing in his mind was dominating earth because that's the only thing God ever told him to do. He never say live so you can go to heaven. He said live so you can dominate the earth with what I gave you. Am I right about it? So in Genesis chapter number three, what we see that, that, that what Adam gave up was his earthly dominion. He gave up his earthly dominion. When he disobeyed God, he didn't give up heaven because he wasn't going to heaven. He gave up the earthly dominion of, of the earth. So now, uh, now, and when he speaks to things, they don't yield to him like they used to. Now, when he tells things what to do, they disobey him like he disobeyed God because he gave up the dominion that he had. Y'all following me? When we see him disobey, now we see his sons killing one another because the, the dominion to act right is gone. So when Jesus comes, let's go to Mark chapter number one. I just want to set you up with this right quick. In Mark chapter number one, and let's look at verse number 14. When you get there, say amen. So we got a lot of people, we got a lot of church people waiting to go to heaven and they're missing the best part of their life, which is the earth. My, my, my. You got people talking about going to heaven, but they ain't never been there. And you don't know what's going on there. And you don't know what's waiting for you there. I'm not saying something's bad is waiting. I'm simply saying, why go to heaven when you can have heaven right now? Because this is what God gave us. He gave us dominion on the earth. Somebody shout dominion. dominion. All right, so let's look at Mark chapter number 1, verse number 14. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel. Gospel simply means good news, right? Good news of the... He did not come preaching, you can go to heaven. Y'all are quiet. He did not come preaching, I'm coming so you can make it to heaven. That's not what he came doing, is it? Let's look at the scripture. Preaching the good news of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is right now. Change your mind and believe this good news. So he says, believe the good news that I'm bringing you the kingdom again. And this kingdom now is going to put you in position where you can dominate like man used to. All right, all right, all right. So now what happened is uh, through, the, through the expanse of time, religion creeps back in. And religion turns the focus off your dominating your situation and circumstances now to just, you know, pie in the sky and then wait till later on. And when you get to heaven, everything going to be all right. But you got to remember this. Watch this. When Jesus comes on the scene and he brings us the kingdom, he brings us something. Watch me now to keep you out of heaven. Oh, y'all, 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 y'all. So, okay, so when Jesus comes on the scene, <laughs> he brings you something to keep. God is trying to keep you out of heaven as long as possible. Do you know why? Because your assignment is for the earth, not for heaven. See, if God was, if God was trying to get you to heaven, he wouldn't have given you healing. I got one person who got it. One person got it. Two people got it. Why did he provide healing? He's trying to keep you here. He's trying to keep you here for your assignment. See, one of the reasons why a lot of people are so shaken is because you don't understand your value to God. You're not valuable to God in heaven. Because when you get off this earth, your assignment is over. You're valuable to God. Y'all better come on here now. 
Listen, you're valuable to God on the earth because you are the only thing God put in the earth to rule it. And when you have this mindset, you rule it for him. Y'all come on here now. See, this is why he gave Abraham the orders and the commandments and the standards because he knew Abraham was going to be a good father and order his children after him. To do what? To follow the ways of God. See, you can speak things into existence on this earth. And you're the only one God has ordained to do that. So getting out of the planet does God no good. Y'all come on, talk to me, Pastor. Come on. Taking you to heaven does not benefit God. So you can get that out your mind. I'm not saying that heaven is not a place that you're going to go. I am saying, see, everybody want to go to heaven. Raise your hand if you want to go to heaven. Be honest with me. Y'all ready to go today? Okay, then. Okay, then. See, because in order to get there, what you got to do? So everybody want to go to heaven, but, but later. <laughs> So now this is not, but God's mindset towards you is not to bring you to heaven. Listen, God's mindset is to get the kingdom in you so you can experience now what they're experiencing in heaven. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't talking to me. So nobody is sick in heaven, right? And so when you tap into the kingdom, God wants you to manifest that here. That's why he said when you lay hands on the sick, they'll recover. So you just brought what's going on there. That's your assignment. Y'all come on now. Ain't nobody broke in heaven, right? So God says, I need to put that flow of prosperity in your life so you can bring that. Come on, y'all. In heaven, you're no good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're no good in heaven. Why? You are not designed to be there. You're designed to be here. Y'all ain't, y'all, y'all. God put you in a body that's made of stuff from here. So when you talk to stuff from here, you connect with it because that's what you're, that's the stuff you're in. Y'all, come on, y'all, y'all. So let, 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 let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me talk to y'all a little bit. Let's go to Matthew chapter six. <laughs> Ooh, pastor. I love to hit religion. I love it because religion keeps people bound Everything he says after this is pertaining to the kingdom, not church. Y'all got to catch that now. Because church binds you, but the kingdom frees you. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. Y'all better come on here now. Y'all better come on. Now, so he says, preaching the good news of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is what? That means I brought it. You ain't got to wait for it. It's at hand. I'm bringing it. Jesus is the only person that we read about that ever talk like this. And he says the kingdom is at hand. Repent. Now, repent does not mean say I'm sorry. It does not mean spit, squall, and cry. It's not. It means change your mind. Say that. It means, say that. It means what? So then he says change your mind from religion to the kingdom. Because that's the only message I'm bringing you. Repent. Change your mind from Sadducee and Pharisee and Catholic Church. Oh, y'all, 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 y'all. Y'all don't like that, huh? Because that's what it is. Don't y'all don't y'all don't y'all see that? Don't y'all see when they make them a bishop, they put the stuff on them and give them the staffs and give them the, the capes. Oh, y'all, oh, y'all. Y'all, y'all know what I, that didn't come from here. Y'all don't. That, that's not the kingdom. That's the harlot. Oh, y'all don't know about that? Y'all don't read Revelation? That's the harlot that all this religion came out of. Y'all didn't, didn't know? Y'all don't know that Jesus never sanctioned that foolishness? Did, you don't know that the Sadducees and Pharisees were like them with the long robes? and loving the prayers of the people and the uppermost chief seats at the marketplace. Y'all ain't read that? 
That's religion. So Jesus says, no, change your mind from that. Change your mind from that. Come over here to get back to what I gave you. Dominion for your life. So y'all going to make me, y'all going to make me talk about it. This is what religion does. It tells you everybody else is better than you. It tells you people that are before you somehow just happen to be better than you and you trying to get where they are. But Jesus said, no, I'm putting all y'all on the same level. Oh, y'all, 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 y'all. He said, no, I'm putting, I'm putting everybody on the same level in the kingdom, in my body. God has no respect of persons that's never changed. And anybody that teaches anything other than that, yes, there must be order, say amen. Yes, there must be people in places of leadership, say amen. But that don't make them better than us. Clap your hands and say amen. Y'all, y'all don't get it. Y'all gonna get it. Y'all gonna get it. So let's go to Luke chapter 4 before we go to Matthew. Luke chapter 4. So this is what Jesus brings. So Luke now is going to tell us the same story here as Mark, but he's going to tell us a little bit different about what Jesus was saying. Luke chapter number four. Get your Bible. Come on, go on over there. Y'all, y'all getting something, right? Religion binds you. Never forget that. The kingdom of God is the only thing on this planet to free you. If it ain't the kingdom, you ain't free. For if the Son shall make you free, you shall be. And he brought the kingdom. And that's all he brought. That's all he taught. And after his resurrection for 40 days, that's all he talked about. The church wants you to focus on the death, burial, and resurrection. But Jesus never focused on that. Y'all, 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 y'all. No, no, no. Let me tell you what he said about the death, burial, and resurrection. That's going to let you in. Y'all was waiting for some more, huh? That's going to get you in the kingdom. I am doing that to open up the door for you to come into the kingdom and experience it. That's the extent of it. It ain't for you to get to heaven. It's for you to come into the kingdom. That's why he only focuses on that in the time when it's come time to do it. And when he get out of the grave, he never even talk about it. For 40 days, the Bible says in Acts chapter number one, he spoke of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. I am leaving you here with the most important thought. The first thought, the kingdom. Y'all got it? Luke 4, 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the good news of the kingdom to the poor. He has sent me to heal the, to preach deliverance to the, recovering of sight to the, set at liberty them that are, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord and get people to heaven. It ain't in there. Oh, that's hard on y'all, ain't it? That's hard on them. Look at man, they're like, oh my God. Do you see heaven in the list? Let me go on this side. Let me go on this side. Do you see heaven in the list, young man? So that must not have been important to Jesus. Can we read it one more time? Because some of y'all shook up. I can see it. Some of y'all shook. Watch this. 18. It's in the, it, this is Jesus talking. How we know? Okay, so this is important then, right? Okay. The spirit of the Lord is on me. I'm telling you why God sent the governor of the kingdom on me. To preach the good news to the poor, where are they? Ain't no poor folk in heaven. Y'all come on, talk to me, right? All right? Sent me to heal the brokenhearted, where are they? Ain't no brokenhearted people in heaven, right? Okay. Preach deliverance to the captives. Ain't nobody captive in heaven, where are they? Okay. Recovering of sight to the blind, spiritual and physical. Ain't nobody blind in heaven, spiritually or physically, right? Where are they? All right. Set at liberty or freedom them that are captured, right? And preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He ain't said nothing about making sure you get to heaven. <laughs> it ain't in the list. Therefore, it wasn't his focus. Therefore, it shouldn't be yours. Oh, boy, I'm plowing, preacher. 
See, what he said was, I came to get you free from all that here. While church teach you, you can only get free from all that when you get there. Y'all ain't, y'all, I'm preaching this, I'm teaching this Father's Day. Y'all better come on. I'm preaching this Father's Day. Huh? See, church tell you, you got to get out this body, leave everybody behind in order to have all this. And Jesus said, no, I came to get that to you. Right? So you, you 75 years old. You ain't got no business with none of this. You're supposed to have been free from poverty. You're supposed to have been free from brokenhearted. Y'all better come on here now. But if ain't nobody teaching it to you that way, you don't even know what to expect. You come into church not even know what to expect. Mm -hmm. to, press, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So let's go to Matthew chapter 6. So this is, why you, this is why I teach principle, because the principles that we teach govern the kingdom of which you are a part. And if you're going to have this, you got to know how to walk, how you got to order your life. And one of the keys, well, let's, let, let, me, let me not get too ahead of myself. I said I wasn't going to be long, but I said I, gotta, I, gotta, I, gotta, I, gotta, I had to plow through that. Matthew 6, come on, y'all. Y'all all right? Read the Bible. Don't read into it. And when you're reading the Bible and people start saying stuff that ain't in there, go find someplace else to sit. Don't let people bind you with the book that frees you. Don't do it. 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 Jesus did not come for you to be bound in earth in, in sin, sickness, and death and then get bound to church. No, that's, no, the devil is a lie. No. No, he came to set you free. Liberty means freedom, right? To serve him like he called you. Y'all, 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 y'all. Matthew 6, 33. But, right? Y'all with me? But what? Seek ye first the what? He ain't told you seek nothing about living like you can go to heaven. He told you seek the principles of your kingdom. Your kingdom operates a certain way. You must know the principles that govern it. If you don't know the principles that govern it, you can't make the choices to get it. Because life is principle-based. Every day you make a choice. But if you, know, if you don't know the right principles, you make the wrong, and then you get the wrong so all this is, is, is a constitution of a kingdom, giving you the principles that govern your, govern your kingdom, right? A soft answer, turn away wrath. That's a principle. That means that when somebody talk is slick and rough to you, you can't respond that way. So you got to respond a different way when you're a kingdom citizen that brings a different result. They talking rough, you talking rough, y'all going to get into it. That's what it's designed to do. You got to work a different principle of a different kingdom. But if you don't know that, right? But if you don't know that, see, all you've been taught was the principles of that other kingdom. Now, if he taught, if he, if he, this is why people have a problem with turn the other cheek. Turn the other cheek is a principle. See? See? People got a problem with that. If he hit me, I don't know, Pastor. I don't know either. I'm just saying. We praying. I'm just saying we're going to try to work that principle. We're going to try to the best of our ability. What I'm saying to you is when you understand principles, you understand laws, like the law of gravity. If you go up, that's a principle. That's a law that's going to happen, right? So when you do these laws, something's got to happen because they're based in principle. Y'all follow what I'm saying? It's not religion. It's laws. It's principles that govern a kingdom. So God is not in heaven blessing people. Ooh, that's hard. That's hard. God is not in heaven pointing out when you're going to be blessed. The principle is set. And when you follow the principle, you walk it and fall into it. Right? Let me tell you, let me, let me give you a good example. So that's like you planting corn in your backyard and then taking all the credit for everything that happened. 
All you did was plant the seed. But the ground knew what to do. The seed knew what to do. The DNA of what you was trying to grow was in the seed. All you did was take it out the pack and put it in the ground. You can't take, you can't take credit for what's going on underneath that ground. That's how the kingdom is. You got to know the principles and then you got to plant them. Once you plant them, they will grow up in your life. Ah. See, help me, Holy Ghost. People are upset with God because they're not getting the results they think they should get. And the reason why they're not getting the results is because they're trying church stuff. And they're not operating in kingdom principle. So if you love your wife like Christ loved the church and give yourself, you're going to get her best. Ooh. What is that, Pastor? That's a principle. You ain't got to be, you ain't got to be listening to Steve, uh, all these other folks. You got to know principle. Y'all better listen to me. You got to know, you got to know, you got to know all right, so let me get to some of that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his. So you got to seek the kingdom, the principles that govern it and what's right with him and everything you need to be added to your life. You can stop hustling. You can stop grinding. You can stop doing all of that. All you got to do is start obeying the principle. Right? So how many of y'all got children? Okay. So you tell your children, you say, listen, I need you in at this time. I need that done. I need this done. And I need this done. And then I'll do this for you. And if they come in when it's time and they do all of that, then you give them automatically what you said. That's how the kingdom is set up. It's already, God ain't got to do nothing. It's already set up. <sighs> it's not like God is in heaven saying, okay, let me see. Today's Ginger's Day. And I'm going to ignore everybody else but uh, the Pfizer's. Pfizer's and Ginger on Sunday. And Jamel and his people on Tuesday. Amanda and her folk on Wednesday. Oh, no, no, Wednesday was uh, Christopher's day. No. The principles are set. And when you understand them and you walk in them, what God has established comes in your life. And many times what people are trying to do is they're trying to make God do something without following the principles. See, when the prophet come and he prophesy, he ain't lying if he a real prophet. He ain't lying if he a real prophet. And when people take money out their pocket and give it to him, that ain't for him, that's for them. Why? Because your money represents you. See, financially, when you put money on something, let me tell you what it says. It keeps you disciplined to what you say you're going to do. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Now, I'm, I'm going to take you in the scripture. I'm going to show you something concerning the prophets. Now, here's the challenge that we have today. Everybody who say they're a prophet ain't. <laughs> That's the challenge we have in the day. Everybody claiming to be prophets ain't prophets. That's the challenge we have in the day. So it's up to you to discern. When you know the principle, you can discern the fool. Come on, clap your hands and say amen. All right, let's look at this. Let's look at this now. Let me give you this definition of honor. Oh, no, let's go to Matthew chapter 16. Oh, man. I took too much time on that. All right, watch this now. Oh, no, we good. Okay. Matthew 16, are you there? Look at verse number 19. Put that up for me, Z. Matthew 16, 19 now. So Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. Watch this. And all these shall be so God don't have no problem with you getting things. The challenge comes in with how you get it. He wants you to have them through the kingdom, right? He wants you to have them through what? So he says, seek first the kingdom and what's right about it and the laws and principles that govern it. And then all you, can, all you have to do then is operate in those and you'll see your life change. I'll add everything you need. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 16. Uh, let's look at uh, verse number... 19. Matthew 16, 19. When you there say amen. All my social media family that's watching us, I want you to get this right quick. Matthew 16, and let's look at verse number 19. And I will give you, so he says, seek it, right? The kingdom. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. You got it? 
So keys is what you need and what you're looking for when you're seeking the kingdom. Got it? You're not seeking the way to heaven. You're seeking keys to your kingdom. Because he told you, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and everything will be added. Then he says, I'm going to give you these keys to the kingdom, of the kingdom. I'm giving you keys of it, of it. Say of. And I will give unto thee uh, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. In other words, I'm going to give you the keys that unlock this kingdom in your life. Or I'm going to give you the keys to shut out everything you don't want to your life. Now, watch this now. Watch this now. Y'all ready for this? Church tell you God's got to do it. Jesus told you, no, I'm giving you the key. Oh, boy. Some of y'all are like, wait a minute. That's why this ain't been working. Yeah, you've been praying to God to do the stuff that he told you. I'm going to give you the key to do. Do you go home, take your key out your pocket, and then say, okay, God, I need you to open this door for me. Do you? How many of y'all do that? No? Because you need access. God don't need the access. So if he give you the keys of the kingdom, he don't need the access. You need it. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all. Okay, so let me say it like this. Then. Anything God is doing on the earth, he got to use you. That's why you need the key. <sighs> Woo. Anytime healing needs to take place, God got to use a man. Yeah, 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 yeah. People struggle with that. Why, why, why am I struggling with that? Okay, hold your place right here in Matthew chapter 16 because we're going to come back there and go over here to Mark chapter 16. Whew. I said I wasn't going to sweat. I wasn't going to do it. I said I wasn't. Anytime God needs to move, right, he must use a man. Now, can I tell you why that is? Because God himself don't occupy a body, so he illegal down here. <laughs> she said that again. She said, can you repeat that? God is illegal here without a body. God is a, so that means he needs a to be here. So if he can't use your body, he can't be here. Okay, so let's let's take a little bit of the, let's take a little bit of the religion and the spooky out. Why do you think that God Himself had to send Jesus? Because He needed somebody in a body. Because only a person in a body is legal. Without a body, you're not. You can't be here. That's why when they had the funeral. All that's laying here is what? Is the physical, right? What's in it is gone. It can't be here. Because the body shut down, it got to leave. So you got to have a body to be legal. Right? Okay, so let me give you this too. Here's what Jesus said. If you don't come through the door into the earth, then you're a thief and a robber. But people don't know what the door to the earth is. The door to the earth is a woman. Yo, what's the, how did how you get here? <laughs> the door to the earth is a woman, right? That simply means you must put on a body to be legal. Legal in what sense, pastor? To have dominion. God said, let us make man in our image after our light in the spirit. But I got to fashion a body out of this earth so they can have the dominion here. Because they can't be here without. This is why you have dominion over demonic spirits. They don't have a. They hear illegally. This is why you take authority over things like that, because you have the authority legally. God must back you. Y'all better come on here. Watch what he says. Oh, where I tell you go? Mark 16. 
Look what he says in verse 18. They shall take up servants if they drink any deadly thing and shall not hurt. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall. So, but you got to have a hand. But you got to have a, for God to move. Ooh, that's hard on people. Because see, church teaches you God can do whatever he want to do. God will only do what he said he going to do. And you never know what God will do unless he said it. And you can't hold God to nothing he didn't say. But you can hold God to everything that he said. Come on, clap your hands and say amen. Let's go back to Matthew 16, please. Matthew 16. I'm trying to get to this point. I'm trying to, I want to get to two points. I got to. I got to get to two points because we're talking about honor because honor is a key. Amen? Honor is a key. And since it's Father's Day, I wanted to get to this point because I wanted us to really understand that um, it's very important to honor fathers. This is why the dishonor of a father is so prevalent in the earth because it takes you out of uh, it's a, it, 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 it takes you out of the ability for God to do certain things in your life. Watch this. What you don't honor, God can't honor. Let me say it like this. If you don't honor, God can't honor you. That's why he said honor your father and your mother. Right? That it may be well with you. This ain't got nothing to do with God. This is about you. That your days may be long on the earth. Because if you don't, then you cut yourself off from the promise of God. Simply because you don't honor. Amen. Matthew 7, 16. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Now that, 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 that means that God is saying, I'm not doing it. I'm giving you to do it. Say amen. Say amen. So instead of always praying God do it, why don't we start doing what God said and bind it? So if you got people outside that you don't, outside your home that you don't want inside, what do you do? You lock the door. You take the key or whatever and you what? You lock them out. That's what you're supposed to do to demonic things in your spiritual life. See, we want to give God the, the opportunity to lock them out. And God is saying, I can't, that's your life. I'm going to give you the key to lock them out though, but I can't lock them out. Because what you bind will be bound. In other words, what you allow will be allowed. Woo, that's heavy. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sick of poverty. Well, then why don't you do something about it? What you want God to do? He didn't give it to you. And if you don't lock it out, it'll stay in. You take authority over your life because you know who you are. So he says, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on the earth shall be loosed. I told you God ain't trying to get you to come to heaven. He's trying to get you to dominate earth. Let's do this right quick. Go with me right quick then to, um, ooh, we. Help me, Holy Ghost. 1 Samuel 2.30. Right quick. 1 Samuel chapter 2. Let me give you all this. Oh, man. I tried to get past this point last week, and it, it just uh, it, it didn't happen. Now, principles must be honored. When you understand principles and you obey them, you're honoring God. Write that down. When you understand principles and you obey them, God looks at that as honoring him. Y'all got that? Okay. So you say, well, pastor, what if I don't know the principle? Well, that ain't God's problem. <laughs> huh? 75 miles an hour in at 55, but you didn't see the sign. Woo! Driver's license and insurance, proof of insurance. Did you know that you were going 75 and 55? No, I didn't see the sign. That ain't my problem. You still must suffer the penalty. I suggest next time you come through here, you look and find out. <laughs> huh? So when your life hits a roadblock and you get spanked, I suggest you go find out what the... Because if you come through here again and violate it, guess what? You're going to get the same result. And this is what happens to people over and over again. They keep experiencing the same thing because they won't go and see what the principle is so that they can fix their own life. 
They pray and ask God to do it. And God is like, what you want me to do? You were speeding. Lead foot. Right? What you want me to do? And you was fornicating. What you want me to do? You was cussing. What you want me to do? You was an adulterer. And now, here comes the consequence. Now it's, oh God, God didn't do it. Oh. Fix it, God. No, I can't fix it. Slow down when you come through here. Did y'all catch that? 1 Samuel 2.30. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, be it far from me. Here's the principle. Y'all ready for it? For whom, for, for them that honor me, I will. And they that despise or reject me shall be lightly. So in other words, God said, to the degree you honor me will be the degree I show up in your life. But the degree that you reject me will be the degree that you see rejection in your life. In other words, God said, I can't, I can't give you something you didn't plant. And God says, when you understand the principles that govern life and obey them, I'll show up for your life in a big way. I don't have to show up. The principle's already set. Y'all, y'all follow that? Okay, watch this. Let's go to, let me give you just a few more then. And next week when I come back, I kind of kind of go back over some more of it. Watch this. Let's go to um, uh, Proverbs 29. Man, I really want to tell this story. Let me see if I got time. Proverbs 29. Let me stick with this principle, and then I'm going to tell you two stories. Is that Okay. I'm going to try to get y'all out here at 12 o'clock, I promise you. Y'all learning anything? Praise God. Good, 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 good. Look at Proverbs 29, 23. All right. So God says when you understand principles and you obey them, you honor me. But when when you reject the principles that I'm trying to teach you, I see that as pride. Because if you know the principle and you don't, that's like, you know, that's like you, you, you speed 75 through 55 and the, and, the, and the police officer pull you over and he say, you know, did you know you was going to 75? Yeah. Yeah, I knew, it was, I knew it was 55. What about it? So? You think he going to let you off with a warning? <laughs> huh? No, that's pride. So that means that there is a fall coming after that because you knew and didn't do. Are y'all following what I'm saying? That's pride. Somebody said, that's pride. See, if you know, if you know, let me say how Jesus said it. If you know to do right and don't do it, then the stripes are coming. That's something like that. You'd be beat with many stripes. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Let me give you this principle. Watch this. Uh, Proverbs 29, 23. When you're there, say amen. A man's pride shall bring him low. Your way brings you low. That's why you got to find out what God says so you can be exalted. Amen? A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. So the key to being upheld by God is to understand his principles and submit to it. Humble yourself to God's way. Because if you don't humble yourself to God's way and you're in pride, then you'll have the other way. You got it? All right, let me give you this, this other one. And then I will talk to you something real specific. Let's look at uh, First Samuel chapter 9. So let me go here. All right, let me give you these two stories because I want to put your mind on something. I said something a little bit earlier about the prophets. I said that when the prophets come and they prophesy, a lot of times they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not lying to you. Um, But there's something that goes along with when prophets come. When prophets come, they declare to you what God wants for your life and where God would, would take your life. But then God has put somebody else in your life called the pastor teacher to teach you principles to get there. So you got a lot of people, they're prophetic junkies, but they don't like to be taught what to do. Because the prophecy ain't coming to pass in your life without your participation. Amen. See, people, uh, they, they, they love a prophetic word. And, you 
there's nothing wrong with that. God put that uh, in the body of Christ for a reason, to give people hope, to give people life. So there's nothing wrong with that. But you can't get the prophetic word and then go sit down. See, the prophetic word comes so that you'll search the scripture for the strategy. Now, when, when you get the strategy, you got to work it till you see the prophetic word come to pass in your life. Say amen to that. All right, where I tell you to go? First Samuel 2. Did I say 9? First Samuel chapter 9? What did I say? First Samuel 9? I got it written down. I just don't feel like going back up there and look at it. Okay, First Samuel chapter 9. Now, uh, three. First Samuel 9, 3. I want to say this because it's on social media for one thing, and I want to say this to people that are watching because uh, there is a real push against the body of Christ right now because there's so much foolishness going on in it. Say amen. There's a lot of foolishness going on in the body of Christ. Everybody that says they've been called by God ain't been called by God. There's a lot of people who are disgruntled, they are angry, they are disappointed, they are saddened, and they are, dis, they are disillusioned. They, they're, they're thinking something is going to happen for them that's not going to happen because they're not following the plan of God right. And so I wanted to say this uh, in people's hearing because um, it, it's causing a lot of people to dishonor their spiritual connection. Now, let me say this to you. Listen to me very carefully. From the beginning, it's very evident that when God wants to empower his people, he sends his man. All right? Exodus chapter number three. So God wants to send to break the people free from, uh, the, from uh, Egypt. He sends Moses. Right? Moses does what? Moses obeys God. He brings him out. Right? But Moses don't obey God all the way. And what happens? God tells Joshua, okay, now Moses couldn't. Moses brought him out. He was faithful in that. But I need you to take him in. Say amen. And then, you know, God raises up uh, these kings. He raises up David. He raises up all these other kings. He raises up prophets. And they lead God's people. Somebody say lead. lead. Anytime God wants to take you somewhere, he's going to always give you a man of God. He's going to always give you somebody in your life to give you principle to help you find your way. Say amen, y'all. Okay. And just because you have possibly connected to somebody who is a charlatan does not mean that God does not have somebody still to send you and show you a way. If the principle is that God will send somebody in your life to help you, you cannot dishonor that. Because if you dishonor that, then God must dishonor you because it's a principle. Amen. A lot of people are character and personality driven. And this is why they miss God because they like the preacher instead of listening to what he's telling you to do according to the word. And so what God is saying to a lot of people is do not dishonor the principle of the men of God. Come on, somebody say amen. All right. So let's look at 1 Samuel 9. And let's look at verse number, what I say, uh, three. Uh, so the donkeys of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to Saul, his son, take now one of the servants with thee and arise, go seek the donkeys. And he passed through Mount Ephraim and passed through the land of Shalisha, but they found them not. Then they passed through the land of Shalem, and there they were not. And he passed through the land of, Benjam of the Benjamites, but they found them not. Y'all see that? So they went to these three cities looking for, looking for what belonged to them. Y'all got that? What are they looking for? What belonged to them? And this is where a lot of the people in the body of Christ are. They're looking for what belongs to them, but they can't seem to find it. And I'm telling you the reason why they can't seem to find it is because many times they won't connect to the man of God that God is telling them that's going to show them their way. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Verse number five. And when they will come to the land of Zuf, Saul said unto his servant that was with them, Come, let us return, lest my father leaving caring, caring for the donkeys and take thought for us. And he said unto him, Behold now, there is in this city a, 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 and he is an, see here is the standard. Somebody shout standard. The standard for the men of God is they must be honorable. They ain't got to be perfect. Oh, man. They ain't got to be perfect.
got to be perfect, sinless. I ain't saying that he's sleeping with everybody is okay. But they, 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 I'm saying you got to be honorable. Because when they're honorable, then they ain't doing all that. And the key is, thank you, thank you, somebody help me. The key is not to disconnect from who God sends because, because they're not perfect. They got to be honorable. Y'all, 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 y'all. And he said, behold, now there is in this city a man of God, and he is a. So the first thing that people need to do when you connect to somebody is you got to find out, are they honorable? You got to watch their life. You can't go to the church because they got a lot of people. You got to find out if that leadership is honorable for you. Because everybody there m might like dishonor. See y'all, yeah. So he says, and he is honorable. Watch this now. All that he says come to pass. That's the standard. Somebody say, that's the standard. So is, is what they're saying come to pass in your life when you obey it? That's the standard. That's how you know the connection. So if you, you know, you say, well, you know, my rent is $200 a month. My car note is $200. Lights is about $100. I need about $700, $800 a month to pay all my utilities. And then somebody said, well, I know where they're paying 1000 a month. You say, well, that'll meet my need. Let me get on over there. That's meeting my need. That's meeting my. People don't go and connect with men of God that meet their need. They go what's popular. And so you have to be careful about that because popularity may not be the thing that's going to get your need met. Watch what he says here. He is an honorable man. That's the standard. All that he says surely come to pass. That's the standard. Now let us go there so that he can perhaps show us our way. They done been to three or four cities and never found what they're looking for. But they said, but let's go to the man of God who is a what? Honorable man. Come on, y'all, right? What he say come to pass? He is the one that can show us. And here, is it, here, here we have a situation with a lot of believers. They can't find their way because they won't submit to what God is saying submit to. They won't go because it don't look like what they want it to look like yet. But when God wants to show you your way, he has somebody earmarked for you. I'm going to get out your way. I'm going to get out your way. Go to uh, 1 Kings. I'm going to get out your way. I'm going to get out your way. I'm going to get out your way. I'm saying that I'm putting that out here because I want people to understand. A lot of people are going around in circles, and y'all going to continue to go around in circles. 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5. You're going to continue to go in circles until you connect with the person that God has sent in the earth to show you your way. Amen. That's just real talk. That's just real talk. I remember we first met Apostle with Dr. Beverly, and um, we were on our way to connect with another large ministry in Detroit. We were already pastoring Increasing Faith Ministries, of which we still pastor in Detroit right now, um, on Saturdays. And uh, we were on our way to connect because we knew we needed a covering. We needed somebody to help us sh show us our way in which we were going. Our church was, our ministry was growing, and we... Um, we, uh, we had never been that way. So there were things that we didn't know and didn't understand. So we needed somebody to help us to navigate that. So we were going to another ministry, but we had been watching Apostle and Dr. Beverly. We were on our way, on 96, going um, on the west side. And Holy Ghost said, no, nah, come up right here and go, go over to Great Faith. And went over there, and we knew when we, when we met the man and woman of God that this was the people that God was connecting us to to help us get where we need to be. So let's go to 2 Kings chapter number 5. Let me show you this real quick. In verse number one, now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man and his master and on, or with his master honorable because by him, watch this now, the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. So here you have a guy who is full of pride because he gotten some victories. And this is what's wrong with a lot of people. They've gotten victories before, but they, they think that they don't need the man and woman of God for their next level. And that's not true. See, here is Naaman. He's a great man. 
um, with his master because the Lord had uh, by him given deliverance unto Syria, but he was, all, he was a mighty man in valor, but he was also a leper. He still had issues. And sometimes the issues that you have, only specific people that God have earmarked in the earth for that season of your life can help you straighten that out. Come on, clap your hands and say, y'all better come on. So let me tell you what happened. He's a leper. He goes to uh, Elisha, and he wants Elisha to come out and pray for him. But because he thinks he's somebody, he wants the man of God to come out and do the whole circus act. And this is the way a lot of believers are right now. They got to have all the pomp and circumstance before they think God is there. They got to have the choir. They got to have the praise and worship team. They got to have all this other stuff. They got to have the children's ministry. They got to have cookies and ice cream after before they think it's God. And this is the way Elisha was. Because he had gotten certain victories in his life, he didn't know that if the man of God sent his servant out and told you what to do, if you do that, you just be healed. So this guy was going to go away mad and keep his leprosy because he wanted the circus act, but the circus wasn't coming to town that night. Elisha said, no, we're not doing that. Go dip in the Jordan seven times and your flesh will become as clean. And he got upset. He got offended by that. I thought surely he'll come out because he got to know who I am. And it took a little servant to tell him, well, if he'd have told you to go and conquer some army, you'd have done that because you think you're somebody. Can I tell you something? Sometimes God loves to put you with people that you don't think great of. Because just because you don't think great of them don't mean they ain't got what you need for your life. Come on, clap your hands. Ooh-wee. Pastor, you're preaching good. Let me give you this last story. I'm going to let y'all go home. First Kings chapter number, I think I want First Kings. Second Kings 4, that's what I want. When you find people in your life I'm going to say this to you, and I know, I, please, don't, please, don't, please don't take this as self-serving or anything else, but this is principle. Somebody say principle. When you find somebody in your life that's not going to play games with you, that's not going to advantage you, but only want your good to happen, only want the good of God to happen in your life, you need to connect with them, and you need to mark out a space for them. Thank you, Ginger. Thank you. Let me say this. If you want a nursing degree, you go to a certified nursing school. You know why you go to a certified nursing school? Because you want something. And you can't become a nurse until somebody teach you something. Somebody that knows something. If you want something from God, you got to go with somebody that got what you want from God. Or you can't get it. (laughs) People say, no, 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 no. I got my own relationship with God. It don't work that way, though. That ain't how it works. No, no, that's not how it works. See, everybody got their own relationship with God, but we are connected in God. So in order for us to stay connected in God, God got to show you where to go so that what's in their life can flow into yours. You can have a lamp, but if it ain't plugged in, you ain't got no power. You got the right bulb in it. You ain't got the switch turned on, but it ain't plugged in. And if it ain't plugged in, ain't nothing flowing into you to turn on even what you got. So what you're saying, Pastor, you will always need God to speak to you about where you need to be so that what's in somebody else's life can flow into yours. You cannot, everything you've ever gotten, you've gotten through somebody. That ain't true. I got it on my own. That ain't true. You ain't got nothing on your own. Since you got here, a man assisted you coming here. Call the doctor. Anybody been to kindergarten? Teacher. Helped you. Anybody got a job? Employer. Hired you. Got on a job, didn't know what to do, looking crazy? Trainer. Trained you. Everything you've gotten. So when it comes to the things of God, it's the same way. God's going to send somebody in your life, whether it be for a season or whether it be for a long period of time, so that something can flow into your life for what you need. Let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. And some people can be just like Naaman. They're going to be mad and upset because it wasn't what they looked like. They thought it should look like. Watch this. But Elisha had the goods. Naaman was the only one going away empty and full of leprosy. And Jesus said this about Naaman. He said, ain't nobody get healed back in that day except Naaman. 
of that leprosy. Y'all better come on. In other words, he was going to die that. All because he didn't, like what the, he didn't like the prescription that the prophet gave him. Go dip in the dirty water. He was going to die. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He would rather die than follow the instructions of the man of God. Fingers falling off. Ear falling off. But because he was seeing himself as somebody greater than the prophet. You'll never, you'll never rise higher than the level of the person that God put you with. But you can rise to the level. Second Kings chapter 4, let's look at verse number 8. And then we're going we're gonna to go. What time is it? Okay, I got five minutes. Can y'all have five minutes? And it fell on the day, 2 Kings 4 and 8, fell on the day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman. And she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, look at me. If your husband don't get in agreement with you, don't do it. See, you're too spiritual. The Lord said, the Lord said, obey your husband. Where you at? The Lord said, you heard the Lord said, but I read the Lord said. Which one take precedent? The written. Y'all, yeah, yeah, see, that's, so you won't be churchy. You won't be spiritual. The Lord told me, the Lord told you obey your husband. See, because you're going to obey the Lord and think you're going to please the Lord, but then your husband will give you the blues at home. And you ain't going to be in heaven. You're going to be down here with him. Oh, see y'all, y'all, y'all. See y'all, see, see, see. See how people, see, watch this now. So you're going to obey, you're going to say what you, you're going to think you're obeying God, right? You think you're obeying God, but, you, but that's going to cause turmoil at your house. Is that God? You see how much confusion people, some people are like, well, Pastor, you know, I, I really don't know. Good, that's good. That's how I'm here to teach you. Here's a great woman that saw the man of God, and she wanted to do something for him. So you know what she said? This is what we need to do. Because two can't walk in agreement unless they're together. And God ain't telling you to disobey your husband. Ooh, that's hard for some people. I know I hear the Lord, but you, but you ain't going by what's written. Because the Lord going to say what's written. The Lord going to say love before he say rhema. That's hard on people. No, no, no. What you're doing is pride. What you want to do. What's going to bring dishonor from your husband. Ooh. Thank you, sis. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. See, see people got a problem with that because they're so used to being spiritual. See, that's what church teach you. Church teach you just do what you hear above what's written. So your husband say, go on out there and get you in the fair. You going to do that too? Oh, you heard that. Hello? No, you're going to do what's written. Am I right, bro? Okay, now see, see, y'all, see, see, see. See, y'all don't know the phone calls that we get. Y'all don't know the phone calls that we get when my husband is upset with me. Why is your husband upset with me? Because I gave the money at church. Well, why is he upset? Because you gave the money. Because he told me don't do it. Well, why'd you do it? I heard the Lord say. You mean tell me, he told you for you left, don't do it. You got in the atmosphere and got hyped up and got emotional and heard something. Now, now, you, he he upset with you. Yeah, he upset. Oh, y'all quiet, y'all. Yeah, he upset because he can't trust you. He can't trust. So if if the preacher tell you to do something else, you do that too? Oh. You cut your eye. They're doing me like that too, Brad. <laughs> oh, cutting the eye. So you got to realize something. I, I, I'm giving you these principles because I want to establish something in you so people stop making error. Amen. Amen. God ain't going to tell you something that's going to mess your household up.
Can I tell y'all something? Say yes, Pastor. If you go by what's written, you can't lose. <laughs> I'm going to read something to you. Y'all ready for it? It's Ephesians 5, 22. Don't go there. Don't go there. You're going to trust me on this one. Read it when you get home. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. What your husband say do? What your husband said do, God is okay with it when you do it. Even if it, even if it means you didn't give it. I don't know about that. Well, then I just read it to you, though. I just read it to you, though. Let me read it for you again. And I don't know why I'm saying this, but I'm saying it. Wives, submit yourselves unto your, the pastor's not your husband. Huh? That ain't your husband. Obey your husband. And God will bless y'all. Come on, put your hand. Y'all ain't saying y'all. Woo! Let me get back over here. I said I'm five minutes. I meant that. Watch this now. Um, St. Kings 4, Pastor. Watch this. Watch this. All right, I got to pick this up on Tuesday. And she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is a holy man of God which passes by us continually. Let us make a little chamber. In other words, we are doing this. I'm not doing it. And obviously he said, you know what? I perceive the same thing. It's okay. We're going to do that. Here's the point I want you to make. Your perception of the man of God will determine what you get from him. And your perception of the man of God will determine your connection with him. And your perception of the man of God will determine what flows from him to you. Whatever you perceive of him is what you can receive. Got it? Some people look at the pastor and they say, well, he's got a healing ministry. Well, that's what you're going to get. Some people look at the pastor and they say, well, he's got anointing of wealth on him. Well, that's what you can get because that's your perception of him. You got it? Whatever you perceive is what can flow into you from him. If you don't perceive him to be a man of God at all, then don't be around him. Because you ain't getting nothing from him. Because you don't have no perception of what's in him. Somebody say amen. In other words, what you're saying, Pastor, don't stay out of church to cause hell. Why? There's a principle involved in that also. And you don't want that because what you're perceiving is what you're going to get. Come on, clap your hands and say, man, Pastor. So honor is a key. Somebody say honor. Honor is a key. And honor, to honor simply means that you place a value on it. You get to place the value of honor. When a man places a value, a certain value on his wife, it'll constrain him and restrain him from what he will do or won't do based off how he honors. If he doesn't place a lot of value or honor on that wife, he'll treat her any kind of way. That's why Christ told us to love them. That's the honor you put on them. That will keep you from doing foolish things. Any relationship that you have, you get the privilege of placing the honor there. You determine the value of it, and that will determine what you get out of it. Amen? So this is why the Bible tells children to honor their parents. Honor them. Place a value on them very high. Why? If it weren't for them, you wouldn't even be here. What you mean they don't know what they're talking about? There wouldn't be nothing to talk about if they didn't get you here. <laughs> Mama, you don't know what you're talking about. You wouldn't, it wouldn't be nothing to talk about. <laughs> so you honor them. You place a value on them. And then what does God say? It'll be well with your life. And you'll live long just because you do that. Come on, put your hands together. Give God praise. Would you stand on your feet, please? I hope you received something today, amen. Honor, I really, really, I really, I'm going to take the rest of the month to really, really dive into that. And we're going to learn about honor because honor is a key that opens up heaven for us.
the kingdom of God. And when we honor God, God will honor us. There will be things that you don't even have to think about that God will just come and bring into your life because you honor. A lot of people are focusing on things that they want that are not coming because you're focusing on it. 